Welcome back to Cottage Treasures Quilting. I'm Ale Dupuy. Behind the camera is my lovely wife, Delilah Dupuy. Uh, again for you today, we have another treat. It is the Wood Duck by Tony Whitney. Um, this is the same as the Who, What, Where in the application of how you build it. Um, these are kits that come in either just the pattern or come in the quilt kit with the wonderful fabrics that Tony Whitney has uh, put together herself. These are available on our website at cottagetreasures.store. And so this is a fusible applique raw edge quilt, uh, minimal free motion quilting really. You're just tacking things down that have been fused down. You can see the beautiful colors she's chosen. I really recommend the kit just because she's done a wonderful job picking these colors. Um, and we are gonna take you step by step on how to put this together from um, tracing to cutting to borders to quilting to, to sandwiching to binding and much more. So uh, come along for the ride and welcome to Cottage Treasures. All right, we're gonna jump into another Tony Whitney quilt. Uh, this one is the Wood Duck. Just like every other Tony Whitney quilt, they are all universal, they all work the same way. Uh, this one we are jumping into has her uh, specifically picked uh, fabrics that came in the kit. Um, it comes with your piece guide. These are uh, the pieces you're gonna use to, to trace on your fabric to then put the fusible webbing on. Um, it comes with this wonderful guide to make sure that you're using the right color. Um, it comes with this, you want to hold on to this. This is a wonderful guide to use when you're placing your pieces later. Just uh, as a nice color guide to show you that you've put them in the right place. We'll get into placing them in a bit. It comes with a piece of paper with a detailed uh, list of everything that you need for the quilt. Um, again, instructions. One page, but both sides. Detailed instructions on how to build this. It comes with the piecing guide, which is going to be um, very important when you are laying down onto your quilt top. Um, again, one of the first steps Tony Whitney is going to have us do is if you have a piece of vinyl, is going to be to lay your piece of vinyl down over the piecing guide, and we're going to use a black Sharpie uh, to trace to the top. That way, once your quilt starts getting more congested with pieces, you can lift up, put a piece down, lay the guide back down on top to make sure you've placed it in the right spot. But we'll get into that later. So uh, we're going to jump right into The Wood Duck by Tony Whitney. All right, so here I am just uh, using the Sharpie here to draw onto this vinyl sheet. I'm not going to bother writing the little numbers in place. Um, you, can, you can do as many as you want. Um, the bigger ones are a lot easier because You've got all that extra room, but these little ones, they're, they're not easy to um, be able to write R29 in a piece that small. So just use your piecing guide to do that. I've taped this down to a light board. You can either set it up on a window if you don't have a light board, um, or you don't need e either either really with the clear sheet. Um, but it is good to tape it down to your workspace so that it doesn't shift around on you uh, while you're doing this. And uh, you're just going to trace out every single... Um, line on here with the lac. Okay, so we've drawn on our vinyl and that now we have our reflective piece to help us piece all our pieces onto the placing guide properly. Um, so now once you've read through the instructions, it's always good to read through the instructions once over before you start any process. We are now going to use our steam to seam 2, uh, steam to seam 2 light, which is which we like the best. Um, it comes with two fusible sides. One side has a grid pattern on it, the other side is blank. When you're tracing, you're always going to trace onto the grid pattern. So we are now going to use sheets to lay them down on top of our piece guides and start tracing. You're going to want to compact as many into one piece, obviously to save money and save sheets as you possibly can. Some pieces are bigger, so we're going to save all the ones that are bigger than a piece each way because we'll end up putting two pieces together to get all of those ones at the end. So it, just get as many as you can in one on one piece of piece. You can move them around as you need to to draw onto the steam seam and um, and then once you're done and we are getting ready to uh, cut them out after you've labeled them right. So when you draw a piece write down what it was that matches on the pattern and then once we've cut them out, we are going to lay them with their specific fabric using the uh, color guide chart and the number that is on the pattern. So we have them all set into their groups and cut out and ready to start putting on to the background. <laughs>
Once you finish tracing all of your patterns down onto your steam seam, we're going to rough cut them out. Um, you don't have to be super picky right now. We're going to fussy cut them later. As for right now, you're just going to cut them out, leave some room. Right, and then you're going to fussy cut them once it's been applied to the fabric. So you see this one's R418. This is going to go into the 18 group. You can see like a whole bunch of these little ones here. These are all fabric number three. So there's no point in cutting those out any more than that. We're going to fuse this down to the fabric. Then we're going to worry about fussy cutting them. The hash marks, again, if you haven't seen our who, what, where video of Tony Whitney's raccoons, the, the hashed marks are fabric that's going to be hidden over top of other fabric. So that's how you fuse all these layers together, just, just in case. All right, so after you've cut out all your pieces uh, with giving them a little bit of extra, no fussy cutting yet, you're going to peel them off. Once you've grouped them together with their appropriate fabrics, you can go through the instructions and count exactly how many pieces you have per fabric. That's a good double check just to make sure that you have the right amount per fabric. Um, always keep your extras just in case. And you're, so you peel off the back of the steam seam, right? It's a double peel action with the steam seam light too, and stick it down. We have one here and stick it down, whichever way you find would save you the most fabric. Um, she gives you, Tony gives you a lot of extra fabric, so. It's nothing to worry about. So once you've stuck those down, you bring them over to the ironing table and you iron them down. So it's about, depending on how hot your iron is, it's about, you just follow the instructions on the steam machine, but it seems to be about 15, 20 seconds of holding down the iron. Um, I'm gonna do these two right here and leave these blank just so you can see a bit of the color change. You'll see a color change to it where becomes more transparent and you know that you've applied enough heat. So no steam, just straight heat. And you can see if the camera allows it, you can see a bit of the color change here. This one's gotten a lot darker letting that fabric color come through. So you're going to do that to all the pieces on all the fabrics. 15, 20 seconds till they're all well stuck. And then we will begin fussy cutting out our pieces finally for placing onto the background. Okay, so we've ironed all of our steam seam pieces down to their appropriate uh, fabric. So now we're cutting them out. Now this is when we fussy cut now. So before we just cut them out roughly so we could get them onto the fabric. Now we're gonna fussy cut them as per the lines that were on the piecing guide. So you're just gonna take some scissors and just follow the lines. It's good to have a good pair of scissors for this part. And then once you've cut out all your pieces, you're going to put them in their appropriate families using that first letter. So all the D's together, all the R's together, all the W's together, the H's together, and so on. And once you've done that and you double check your pattern, then you can go ahead and lay them out in order from like D1 through D33, for example. That way you know which one's getting placed first because they're going to overlap each other. So you want to make sure that you start in numerical order. So I'm just going to cut the rest of these out and we'll show you what they look like once they're all cut out and grouped into their families. Okay, so you'll notice in uh, the wood duct there are six pieces that have cutouts inside of themselves. You can see here, if you read on the piecing guide, it says do not cut out until fused. Since we have fused them now, we have to cut these out. So um, here's four I've already done here. And you can see... So you can write, like Delilah wrote on this one when she cut it out, was don't cut out. And she meant don't cut out until she'd fuse that piece down. So now that the pieces are fused down, I've cut them out and I'm going to show you a couple. So you want to start in the middle, like this is an eye piece right here. 
So really, if you've got nice fussy cutting scissors, you can just kind of poke a little hole through the center, right? And you're not too worried about disrupting the fabric because that piece is going in the garbage anyways. So once you've cut that hole, then you can cut your way to the edge. And then that's this is when you'll get close to the edge and then have to start working your way around the circle here, fussing. I just find try doing this with big scissors is not going to be um, ideal. So it's better to have a small pair of scissors for these little pieces. Right, and if you find your pace, your paper wants to lift up on you uh, while you're doing this, quickly just take it over into the ironing board and give it a couple seconds with some heat and it will fuse that piece of paper back down and it'll cooperate a lot nicer. So, we've cut out that center and that's what that piece will look like and that's for the eye. So this piece is quite long and kind of curved, so I'm going to bring it over to the cutting board because we have our little 14 millimeter um, rotary cutter. And so I am gonna follow this guy. And this will save me having to run my small scissors all the way. If you don't have a small rotary cutter like this, we do have them on our store. And, uh, or you just end up using the scissors, whichever works, right? Both work, so. All right, so that's one side. Now I'll get the other side here. And my finger's down here just to kind of help guide it. This is uh, in the water section of the quilt. So depending on how close you can get. So that came off nice on that side. Then I can just grab my scissors for this last little bit here. There we go. So now we have our six, six pieces that they wanted us to cut those pieces out at the end. There you go. And now we're going to go lay all these in their families. All right, so we've cut all our pieces out. We've cut our inside pieces that were within a piece and we've laid everything down on the table. You go through your steps, you'll see it'll tell you that you're going to install um, H1 through 24. That's not the right numbers, but I'm just play with me now. Just so you know which order to put them in. So we have literally, I has four pieces. We've laid out the four pieces here. H has 21 pieces. We've laid them in order. This one is, no, this says H, H21. In the pattern, it says H1 through 22. There is no 22 we could find on the pattern, so we believe that's just a typo. D1 through 48, right? All in order. This helped us because there were a couple pieces that we forgot to cut out. So then we were able to go back with the extra fabric we kept and trace that piece and get it in the order here. W's and the reflections are ours. So we now have everything, every piece we need to have, we have right now. So now we are going to go through the steps of placing. Um, the pattern's gonna have us build the eye first, then it's gonna have us build the head, then we're gonna put the eye that we've built. This is gonna be using the uh, non-stick applique sheet. We're gonna put the eye onto the head, then it asks you to build the body. So we're gonna build the body, then the head will attach to the body, obviously. These are getting built before getting put onto the background. So um, the eye, the head, and the duck are all gonna be built separately on the applique sheet. Um, if you've seen who, what, where, uh, you'll notice that the raccoons were all built well before they were put onto the background. So we're gonna go ahead, grab the, um, the instruction guide, lay down an applique sheet, on our uh, ironing board and slowly start to build the eye and the head and the duck. All right, we've made it to the most exciting part of this quilt. We finally, with all the tedious cutting and drawing, we are now ready to start placing. We have our light board underneath here. Um, we have our ultimate uh, piecing guide here, the full piecing guide. We have an applique pressing sheet. 
we have our four pieces that make up the eye. A little bit of a little guy. And then we have our vinyl sheet that we drew earlier in case um, we want to use that for placing as well. So, again, as per the instructions, you're going to start with E1. This one is E1. I recommend using some tweezers if you have them. So you're going to peel off the back piece and you are going to place this where it needs to go which is pretty much the eye is that back piece and then let the glue stick down we are going to bring this over to the ironing board after and just iron straight onto it which is what that sheet is uh, made for and the intended purpose so that's e1 e2 is this little guy here so you can even take slide that away just to see which direction this is? I think it goes this way. Yeah, like that. Okay. Peel off that back. I'm going to use our tweezers to place this. Right now, it's hard to see with the um, Teflon sheet on top, so. We can quickly just lay this over top to see, right? I mean, it doesn't need to be perfect, but that looks, that's pretty, pretty bang on close. So we'll go with that. All right, so that's piece one and two. You can see piece three on the background here, kind of an up down, upside down C. So go ahead and peel that back off. And I'm just going to use this as a guide above me and go ahead and lay this down. Now the eye. It is so small. All right, so we now have the eye. So you just lift your sheet up, bring it over to the ironing board. Just a little bit of heat on it. No steam, just straight heat. And now that eye is going to be good to peel off and set to the side while we work on the head. Right, you go with piece number one, everything else is stuck to piece number one. So you can just go ahead and stick that on the side and then you've got the, the full sheet here to now we'll start working on the head. So we're going to arrange all the pieces on our table here next to us in order and we're going to start building the head. All right now we're going to work on the head and I am going to probably speed this up for you. Um, again I'm going to be starting from H1 and working my way to the end which is H21. And uh, since these take sometimes these are a little bit of a pain to peel I'm going to peel these I'm going to speed up the video a little bit um, but always go in order 1 through 21 peel your piece off the back and start placing.
All right, we are ready for the body. I've just stuck the head up there to be on the side. I've laid down all my fabrics to my uh, left here in order. I've got this uh, just for a little guide to for help placement. And uh, again, we're going to start from one and work our way up. All right, and that is all the pieces for the duck body. So again, we're gonna bring this over to the ironing board, give it a good heat up to hold everything in place and bind it all together, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so we have laid our black background down, which we decided to lay down on the parchment paper because our uh, applique sheet wasn't long enough. And um, now we are going to the reflection pieces. So again, I'm going to speed up this video and just kind of go through all the placement of the pieces. We've now swapped out. We have our vinyl sheet underneath and I kind of have this uh, piecing guide right above where I'm working um, for a reference. You can see we can lay it over top as well if we want to and it'll work the same as the vinyl sheet did. All right, starting with R1 and working our way up.
All right, we've placed it all together. So this is on the parchment paper still, right? So before we fuse this down, we're going to be carefully remove this from the parchment paper, lay it on our background, and then we can fuse it all down to the background. All right, we've finished placing all of our pieces together now. That was on that parchment paper. Now we're laying it down onto the background fabric that you are given with the kit. And we are going to steam, steam this whole, all the fusible webs now on the back, right? So now we need to put it down onto the background. So this is gonna consist of a lot of putting it in one spot and hold it for about 15, 20 seconds, um, just straight down in one spot. We're gonna do this over the quilt, let it cool. I'm gonna do a second one just to really make sure that it's quilted down or uh, fused down before we get started on adding the borders. We're gonna square it up. Once this is done, we're gonna square it up and add some borders. So we finished fusing this down at the ironing table, uh, about 10 minutes over there continually placing it down for 15, 20 seconds. We're now gonna square the quilt off. So usually when I'm squaring a quilt off, I'll kind of run my ruler about what I feel like is center of the center focal piece of the quilt. And I will pick that as my spot to get one edge, one edge square to start. And then once I have one side square, I can then lay my quilt up against the bottom line here and be able to use that to start squaring off the sides. And then it's as easy as lining up your ruler with one of the lines at the bottom and going straight up the side. Same thing, you can leave the quilt exactly where it is, line it up. And then the last side. And now we have a square quilt to be able to add some borders. So using the remaining fabric, um, it's gonna go black. It, it pretty much is going from smaller to bigger. You're gonna do a one inch um, border with the black here. You're gonna do an inch and a quarter with this, uh, with this one here. And you're gonna do three and a quarter, three and a half, sorry, with the final fabric. So one inch, one and a quarter, three and a half. So I'm, all I'm going to do is cut this into a strip at one inch, cut this one into a strip at one and a quarter, and cut this one into strips at three and a half. And then you are going to put your borders on uh, vertically first. So black one inch there, and then do it across the top. Then you're going to go on to the next fabric. So that on the side uh, vertically and then horizontally and you're going to finish off with the last three and a half fabric again doing vertically first and then horizontally last. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these fabrics and then I'll be ready at the quilt machine to start sewing the borders on. Okay so we're going to do the first horizontal border doing it on the inch and or the half inch border. Again it's going to go half inch, um, inch and a quarter, three and a half. So you want to set your foot um, to quarter inch seam allowance, right? Because the quarter inch seam allowance is what it says in the instructions. So whether you have a little template that sticks onto your machine or I just adjust my needle, I put a ruler underneath and I adjust my needle to the right until I get my quarter inch seam, whichever works for you. Um, you can pin your fabric into place if you want. 
I just line mine up with the edge and go from there. So I'm just going to line up my top edge and get my fabric where I want it. And I'm going to drop my needle. I'm going to do a backward stitch. Again, I always do to lock in my fabric, my stitch. So after I finish the backward stitch, then I'm going to go forward. And all I'm going to do is keep this border lined up with the sewing edge of my sewing foot there as I go. And then when you get to the edge, I'm going to do a back stitch again. And then we'll iron those seams down. So then this is when you can cut this part off here, down at the bottom. Um, this is going to be used for your horizontal once we get both the verticals on. So I'll go ahead and flip this around, sew the other length on the vertical, and then we will jump to the horizontals. Okay, we've got both. We've got the horizontal and the verticals on now. We'll iron these open and then we're going to grab our inch and a quarter strips of the other fabric. And we are then going to do another quarter inch seam allowance. Sewing those borders onto these borders again, doing the verticals first. And then we'll do the horizontals next. So I have cut my pieces out, my background, my batting, and I have ironed them flat. The background's been ironed flat. I gave this another treatment with the iron just to make sure any pieces that may have been trying to peel up are now stick down ready for free motion quilting. And we've built our sandwich. So as every sandwich, backing, batting, and then the quilt top. So we are ready now to bring this over to the machine, pick out our threads and set up our machine for free motion quilting, which we will show you that, how the setup goes. 
All right, now picking out your threads for the quilt. Um, you can pick a neutral color and just roll with that throughout the whole quilt. Uh, we have decided to do a good color grouping um, for specific colors on the quilt. We're going with this goldish metallic is going to go on our water reflections. Obviously the white's going on the white. There are some purple sections within the uh, wood duck. We're going to use purple, uh, blues, We've got some grays for the darker colors, and we also have black that we can use in the black. Um, some green for the green colors, orange for the orange, and brown for the brown. So we'll be um, breaking thread and changing our bobbin quite a bit for this quilt, but we really feel that uh, changing colors for all the colors is really going to help uh, keep it as natural as possible without kind of seeing those threads. So I'm not going too crazy like I do on some quilts with the free motion quilting. This one is strictly running the edge of the raw edge of the applique pieces to hold them down for uh, for time to pass and the pieces not to come back off. So uh, nothing in depth if you want to that's totally up to you but for as for this quilt we are just trying to tack down our pieces uh, so they don't come off again. So we'll move over to the machine here and we'll set it up for free motion quilting. All right, so we're ready to change over our machine. I thought I would do this. I'll do a little bit of a time lapse in it and explain each piece I'm changing. Um, just to go through what we would do on our Memory Craft 6500 from Janome. So first off, I change the foot. All right, this is the foot that I like to use. It's the full circle. Um, it just tends to be the one I like. It's got springs built into it. Um, and then I can adjust with a screw how high or low I want the bottom of my foot to touch my fabric when I'm free motion quilting. So next I always let off on my pressure foot down to one. My feed dogs are down here, so I lower those, which are these guys. So those are now down out of the way. Um, my tension here usually wants it to be between a one and a six, but I'm gonna test that when I go to um, on a piece of fabric, sandwich fabric, to test the tension because it changes per quilt and with the steam seam pieces and the layers, I'll have to adjust it accordingly. So that's all good. So then what I normally would do is I will put down my, my um, Teflon sheet that helps it slide around and my gloves and I will get the appropriate color I'm going to start with set up and we will be ready to free motion quilt. Um, so just again test fabric piece sandwich you're going to want to test your tension before you actually move over to the quilt. Okay so we have our white thread in um, we have our Teflon sheet underneath we have our gloves on. I like to use the gloves. And we are starting with white. I've already tested my tension, although when I'm done my first stitch, I am going to flip my quilt um, and just see if the tension uh, mirrors to the amount of layers on this quilt. So we, I know we normally use some spray, um, Elmer spray adhesive to spray down our quilt, but being at the size of this project, um, we're not too worried about it. Uh, same with working from the middle out. Um, it's such a small project that it's not overly as dire to have that. So we're just going to go ahead and start with some white. I'm going to go ahead and fill in all the white before I move on to an another color. So again, I changed my needle again um, to clean it up from our last project and just give us a more crisp uh, drop in with our needle. So again, just really close to the edge, I'm just going to follow the white here and um, sew uh, some of this white down. The white over here I don't need to worry about because it's underneath the black, so when I sew the black it will end up holding those pieces down. I like to go back and forth once or twice just to kind of lock that stitch in. Let's go. 
let's just start with the black right here. All right, so we finished the white. I'm going to change my thread now. I'll probably work on the oranges, uh, the blues and greens after. I'm kind of working on the smallest bits first, so then I can get to the threads that I'm going to use more of. Um, just so everybody is aware, I just wanted to point this out, that we are using a 9014 uh, top stitch needle, and we are using 40 weight thread. That's um, This is our go-to from quilting pieces together right to the final free motion quilting and the binding. We don't really roll away from 40 weight or uh, 9014 uh, needles ever, so I just wanted to point that out in case you're wondering which kind of needles and thread we we're using. So I'm going to change my bobbin, change my thread, move over to um, the orange, and I'll just give you a close-up shot of the whites here. All right, so we've finished all of the top stitch on the uh, raw edge applique pieces in the middle. So now we need to uh, do some kind of a design in the border because we've got about four inches here that won't be sewn and we need something to hold it down before we go ahead and start doing the binding. So I've done a straight line here. I'm gonna do some feathers. So I've done a basic little feather here and kind of zigzag my way down the border all the way to the other end where I ended it with another bubble. I did the same up here as you can see but I actually finished and filled it in with feathers. So I'll go ahead and do this side for you. Again just did a bit of a teardrop and then kind of swivel back and forth onto one end. So the way I like to start these ones is to find a spot in the middle about right here where I can just do a bubble because I'm gonna want my feathers to go both directions um, as you can see on this side they're all crusting this way and that way so you can see that and so where I started it was right here so you can see this is my change in direction. So I did this bubble right here, and then I did all the feathers going this way. Then I changed direction, and now the bubbles are going this way. Or the feathers. So you can see where I changed direction. Same for this side. All the feathers are coming in this direction. And once we get to the one spot, you can see right here. This is where I changed direction. So I did this main bubble, and then you can see that the feathers change directions when they're going this way. So my spot's gonna be right here. So this is my spot where I'm going to do my first bubble. 
and now I'll be able to build off my feathers going this way and when I get back down here by following the stem back down I'll be able to go this way. So we are on to the squaring of our quilt now that we've finished free motion quilting. So usually I like to start from about the center of my main focal point and just line up my ruler just to see how square things are going down from that point. So if I line up at about the center of my dock and go down, it looks pretty good for my black border looking pretty square. So I'm going to go off of that down to the very bottom and pick a point to then start cutting and this will make the bottom of my quilt square as a starting point. And once we do this, we can start to line our quilt up with the actual lines on our cutting board. Okay, so now the bottom is square. Now I'm just going to get rid of some of this extra here so I can see the cutting board. Line this up on one of the lines here. You can cut this as far as you can where there's still fabric. Now we have two points. So we can go ahead line the quilt up in a corner, corner set of lines from your cutting board, lay it down, and now we're good to go on this long edge again. Right, let's do the, let's do the other side first. And again, I'm just going to cut some of this excess off. up again. All right, now we can see all the way Line this up in a corner again.
All right, so now we have a square quilt ready for binding. We are going to be using our special Janome binding foot. So using what's left of our last uh, border, we're going to cut our strips for our binding. So for our foot, they are two inch strips. So you'll just take your piece over to the ironing table and just iron it flat with one edge, one edge straight to be able to start cutting these into two inch chunks. All right, we've got all our strips cut. Now we're going to want to sew these together to make one giant strip for one continuous binding. So usually what I do is I line up corner to corner and then I want to check to make sure that when I open them it is going to be a straight piece, right? Because if you did it this way, it's not going to work. So go ahead. That'll work right there. We're going to make a line on it using, you can pin it or Use pins as your guide. I like to use a Mark Begone pencil. Since this is a dark color, I'm just going to use the white. And then I bring this over to the sewing table and I sew back stitch forward then a back stitch to lock it in. And then I will cut this extra off down to about a quarter inch seam. So you can use a rotary cutter or some scissors. We're just going to cut this down to a quarter inch. And you can see that we now have a continuous strip. And we are going to continue to do that so until all four pieces are put together. One good thing to keep in mind is that your seam is here. Flip it upside down to the good side and slide your fabric till you get to your corner. So now you know you have good side facing up. So when you lay the next piece on top and make your mark to then sew them together, you know that when you sew it on this side, you're gonna have the good side again. So you don't wanna end up having a seam on one side and a seam on the other. You want all those seams on the same side. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up. These last uh, two stitches to put all four of them together and then we will be ready to put on our special binding foot and bind this quilt. All right, if you've watched our other videos before, you know that I do not like the binding. Um, there are so many different methods on how to do it. Um, we own a Janome Mastercraft, Memory Craft 6500, so we have bought this foot, which is specifically for this machine, to help us with binding, because as you can see, it goes through this jig here, and it folds it for us so that at the end of the day all I gotta do is get my fabric in there and it will automatically fold it over and give me nice edges so if you're like me and you don't like binding um, oh it's a good idea to look into potentially getting a binding foot that fits your machine and makes it a lot easier for you. So I will videotape a little bit of the binding happening just so you can see the ease of just feeding my fabric in the slot there and not having to worry about it. And um, other than that, we will be concluding this video shortly. All right, well, we've completed the wood duck by Tony Whitney. This beautiful raw edge applique using Steam Seam Light 2 uh, was a joy to make and is an absolutely stunning quilt. Um, this is definitely gonna get framed and hung up on our wall when we're not touring quilt shows around the country because this, this is a really gorgeous quilt. You gotta top your, tip your hat off to Tony Whitney on creating such a beautiful quilt 
And like we've said before, building this quilt along with any other one that Tony Whitney has made, like the Raccoons Who What Wear, they are quite similar. And um, once you've done one, you've done them all. So thank you so much for joining us. Please leave a comment down below, like and subscribe to our channel. All these Tony Whitney patterns and kits with the fabric are available on our store at Cottage Treasures Dot Store. And again, my name is Alay Dupuis from Cottage Treasures Quilting, and thanks so much for joining us again. Thank you.